Welcome back guys, you're watching today's Platinum and in this video we're going to be going over the daily news for Bitcoin as well as cryptocurrency. So if you guys enjoy daily news videos like this as well as other cryptocurrency trading and informational videos, make sure to subscribe for future videos and updates and also hit that notification bell if you guys are interested in getting updates on your phone. So getting into the update guys, we are looking pretty good today um, across the market, seeing a lot of green, good amount of you know solid price movement towards the upside. Not too crazy, which is what we want to see. We want to see stable growth over the next few weeks, um, hopefully leading uh, throughout the summer. Stable growth is what I'm focused on right now. Uh, as you can see, I have a ton of uh, drawings here. Let me just delete those real quick. But zooming out here, um, guys, if you haven't seen my videos that I've talked about, my predictions for the next two years or so for Bitcoin, definitely check that out. But uh, one thing I'm focused on for the next two years or so is stable growth. Uh, throughout the crypto community, kind of seeing a, a stable influx of new money come into the market, as well as uh, less and less manipulation, hopefully, of prices um, as we move into a more regulated area. Of course, in the next two years, I do expect regulation as well as some sort of Bitcoin ETF and other advancements uh, with the cryptocurrency markets. Hopefully, we'll see you know a NASDAQ cryptocurrency exchange open one day, um, hopefully in the next few years or so. But, um, you know, until that point that we see that large catalyst that will, you know, end up really boosting this market back towards the upside past 20K and hopefully, you know, further upwards, 50, 100K uh, and further on, I am hoping to see stable growth until that point. You know, we want to see stable growth instead of this parabolic growth that's not healthy for the market. I'm really focused on that and I expect to see some, some type of growth. Uh, within the next two weeks back up to possibly nine thousand dollar area um, possibly see some resistance maybe a retracement from there and then continuing upward and kind of moving horizontal um, i don't expect any uh, large moves i feel that we've already kind of had the moves that we're going to see this is kind of what we're going to see for the next good amount of time obviously we'll see some sort of bullish movements and bearish movement i'm i'm sure of that but um, for the most part I, I do expect to move horizontal and not really go too crazy uh, for the foreseeable future so let me know what you guys are thinking of bitcoin's price movement uh, right now we're holding kind of interesting area we kind of see have a resistance right around 6800 so hopefully we can break through that right now looks like we're starting to move up towards that so uh, let me let me know guys what you guys are feeling for bitcoin's price for the next few months or so but um, that's kind of my opinion on that so not a ton of news today to be honest uh, not a not a lot of big news nothing like that um, besides this story right here central banks will jump start the decentralization of money so i thought this was interesting We'll also touch on this little article right here. So why don't we jump into this and talk about this for today. So central banks will jumpstart the decentralization of money. So whether Bitcoin or its imitators eventually achieve global uh, ubiquity, they have already achieved success in one fundamental way, forcing humans to rethink their relationship with money and banks. Cryptocurrencies weren't on the ballot during Switzerland's sovereign uh, money referendum uh, last weekend in which Swiss citizens rejected by a ratio of three to one a proposal to end fractional reserve banking and give sole money creation authority to the Swiss National Bank. But they were the elephant in the room. Uh, the very presence of the crypto alternative, I believe, will eventually force economies worldwide to disintermediate banks for money, yet the direct authors of that change won't be activist voters wielding ill-conceived referenda or crypto enthusiasts voting uh, with their wallets. The first phase of transition towards a true money of the people will be implemented by central banks themselves striving and competing to uh, remain relevant in a post-crisis post-trust digitally connected global economy so just to touch on that i definitely agree with that i think the first phase which we're already starting to see is definitely going to see integration with cryptocurrency and banks uh, we've already started to see that with for example the uh, large investment bank in the united states um, uh, Goldman Sachs getting involved with crypto, looking to create its own um, U.S.-backed token, uh, partnering with Circle, uh, that company, as well as other banks, you know, partnering with Ripple. There's a lot of banks uh, partnering with Ripple, as well as other banks taking advantage of blockchain technology. I think that's where we'll first see uh, really a mainstream boost 
in this idea of using a digital currency and um, rethinking our our relationship with banks. So continuing on, that might disappoint adherents of the uh, cypherpunk dream who birthed Bitcoin. But the good news for those who want governments out of money altogether is that when currencies become digital and enjoy all the bells and whistles of programmable money, they will foster more intense global com competition among themselves. When smart contracts can manage exchange rate volatility, for example, people and businesses involved in international trade will not need to solely rely or rely solely on the dollar as the cross-border currency of choice. This more competitive environment will ultimately open the door to non-government digital uh, alternatives such as Bitcoin. So um, what I'm kind of hearing is the current market, the currency market that we have, you know, you can trade currencies, right? On Forex, you can trade currency pairs, and there's already a market for currencies. What I expect to happen is to have cryptocurrencies enter that market and become even more competitive. I'm not sure how they'll exactly enter that market and become, you know, a market altogether, but I do expect for cryptocurrencies to play as some sort of a competition to all these other currencies, and uh, to see that, you know, competition play out will be quite interesting. To be sure, official enthusiasm uh, enthusiasm for central bank issued digital currency or CBDC, as it has become known, has unwant has won uh, waned somewhat uh, as the old guard of central banking has dug in its heels. Um, as the Bank of England, which uh, spearheaded research into the idea three years ago, Governor Mark Carney uh, has lately warned of financial instability of if his institution were to directly provide digital wallets to ordinary citizens, a change that would, in effect, give everyone the same right to hold reserves at the central bank as regulated commercial banks. The Bank of International Settlements, a kind of international club for central banks, has echoed Carney's concern as have other officials. This backlash, which suggests that the bank super, uh, supervisory teams would, within central bank bureaucracies uh, have regained ascendancy over technologists and innovators in their internal debates over CBDC stems from a well-founded expectation bank runs would be a real possibility. Why hold your money at risky, friction-laden institutions paying zero, near zero interest when you can store at zero risk with the central bank itself and trade it automatically with other fiat digital uh, wallet holders? But why also should we care what happens to banks? So before, I don't think I really want to go into the rest of this. This is a very long article. You guys should definitely check it out. Over on uh, Coindesk, it is, this is the title of the article. It's one of the top articles today. But I really start, I'm starting to see that banks are really the problem, guys. Um, if you guys don't know, in the U.S. at least, there's a fee just to have like a savings account, a checking account. I think I pay like, I don't know if it's $20, $40 or something per month um, or $15 per month. Uh, for different bank accounts for different banks, there's Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, all those banks uh, charge like fees and just go crazy with basically taking advantage of the people that use their services. Um, they've kind of built this infrastructure where we're just expected to deal with all of the unnecessary fees that they that they have um, that we have to pay, you know, when we do certain things. And we shouldn't really have to deal with that as a society. So I think uh, cryptocurrency is going to see somewhat of a, uh, a battle between banks coming in the future for sure because I think banks are part of the largest problem with our current financial system, um, especially with all of the, you know, different variations and uh, corruption and um, just absolutely insane fees that they expect us to pay. Um, and the fact that, you know, we can't control our money all of the time. Sometimes it's not in our control. You know, if you go to a bank, sometimes, you know, if you have $100,000 in your bank account and you ask for $100,000, they may not even be able to give you your money at that time. So it's just this fact that banks are starting to see, get scared, I think. Um, you can see somewhat from that article it talked about some of the concerns from large bankers and obviously they have those concerns because their institutions are at risk so very interesting to see with that but guys no other huge stories for today i thought that was really interesting the uh, the ba battle between banks and how banks will possibly at the same time bring cryptocurrency more mainstream and also basically destroy themselves at the same time i mean if they start to come out come out with these digital currencies 
I think eventually we'll innovate to the point where we don't need banks anymore. So basically at the same time that they're bringing cryptocurrency mainstream, they'll also be hurting themselves in the long term because I don't think banks will continue to be the way they are in the in you know the future. I don't think we really need um, banks that are like the current institutions that we have um, in the future. So let me know what you guys think of that. So let me know what you guys think about banks in the future, what kind of services they'll be providing, if they'll be providing um, what they are today. And yeah, guys, let me know what you think, because I think it's an interesting discussion, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So thank you guys for watching. If, like I said, if you guys aren't already, make sure to subscribe for daily updates on cryptocurrency as well as other trading uh, news strategies and other videos as well. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow for the next video. Have a good one, guys.